Okay, so Pi News episode 66. So first up, this story from the register. I talked about Vulcan 1.2 compliance in the previous Pi News, but there's a little bit of an update in this story. Does this mean users can fire up their Pi and scratch that first person shooter itch, not without some legwork? All the changes required for this have already been merged into the upstream V3DV MISA driver and will eventually be available in future Raspberry Pi OS updates, meaning that getting the code up and running is not for the faint-hearted. So the current release of MISA is 22.1.3 uh, and the code is unlikely to show up until 22.2. They do mention in the story that this writer uh, got it running in Consta Kang's Lineage OS uh, and that's a great operating system for Raspberry Pi. Um, and there has been a new version that's come out. So August 11th uh, was the latest version, which was after the announcement. There's Vulkan support, but it's uh, Vulkan 1.1 uh, in this version. So hopefully in the near future, and you can see the, uh, the Mesa version 21.3.1. So we need that to be the later version as well. Consta Kang's updates come very regularly, so I expect to see it in that pretty soon. And when they asked Evan Upton when the technology would show up in Raspberry Pi OS, he wrote, right now desktop compositing is handled by Glamour, which sits on top of OpenGL, not Vulkan, and added the best examples of real world applications for Vulkan on Raspberry Pi today are games running on Android lineage. So we look forward to those updates coming in the future, might get some better emulation, maybe better uh, PS2 and GameCube emulation. And I had an email from Volks PC. So Volks PC uh, enable the use of Linux within Android uh, and they support the Raspberry Pi and it does support the latest version on Consta Kang's page. So if you want to be able to run that, you can with the very latest image from Consta Kang. I've got separate videos on Volks PC running in Android. And more about Vulkan was mentioned in this story from Pharonix. Fedora 37 to offer official support on Raspberry Pi 4 devices. The Raspberry Pi 4 to date hasn't been a significant focus for Fedora Workstation due to various patches not being upstreamed, most notably waiting on the open source 3D graphic bits to be upstreamed in the kernel. Now though that those upstream bits are coming together, Fedora 37 will be focusing on advertising its support for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B as well as the Pi 400 and the Pi Compute Module 4. With the open source GL and Vulkan support, these latest Raspberry Pi boards are suitable for Fedora workstation usage. The latest milestones here are V3DV just having crossed Vulkan 1.2 and Raspberry Pi V3D driver support in Linux 6. I always like to have a look at Raspberry Pi Locator to see what the Pi situation is like. So you can see quite a lot of Compute Module 4s available in Germany and uh, you've got a real choice of different models and everything. So really good stock. Uh, we've also got in... I think that's Switzerland, Pi 3 Model A+, Plus. Uh, they've shown up before, and this is nice to see, AT, I think that's Austria, uh, Pi 4, 2 gig of RAM, so if we click on that, what does that site look like, and uh, yeah, I guess that's Austria, because it's got the German flag there for, for language, and I guess it's one per person maybe um, from that, um, but that hopefully that means that it's in stock with a tick there. So if you are in Austria or maybe nearby in Europe, possibly you can get one of those. I like this one on Reddit, uh, a Pico console I created for my son, description in the comments, and uh, there's a video. So what I'll do is just show some stills on it, but you can see it's got some uh, raised keys. So up, down, left and right. Got a little LCD screen on there as well. So if I play it and then I pause it. So it's got all the construction, Raspberry Pico Pocket Gamer, uh, and you can see the Pico at the bottom there. Let's skip on a bit. A bit of soldering involved and you can see a bit of Tetris there working a few other games there and it looks like this is an interface to be able to switch between the games that are already on there but yeah very admirable to see that working on a Pico I'm more of a Pi Zero 2W fan uh, if I was going to build something like that it will certainly open up a lot more emulation but always nice to see really like that project and if we scroll down, the end cost is around 25 euros, so pretty decent. So from Facebook, this was an interesting one. Uh, have a look at this. Uh, this is a Pi 2. Kids have destroyed the USB slots as seen in PIC. My solder skills are average. What have people done to fix this problem? Any advice would be appreciated. How do you get the, the innards out from the USB sockets? That's amazing. That must take some serious force uh, to be able to get those parts out of the USB sockets because they are pretty sturdy. And there's a load of comments under there, so have a look through the comments. Uh, some of them are quite amusing. 
Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico again, and you can see it's on a breadboard. And this is the Simon game, so this is the one where it flashes the light, and then you've got to repeat the pattern, uh, and if you fail to repeat the pattern, you lose. Uh, but it, yeah, it's, it's nice to see all the workings of it and everything, a nice little project there. And this is a bit of a mod here on the Zega Mame Gear, uh, which is like a Game Gear handheld Raspberry Pi. Tried combining a three and a half inch composite display into the Game Gear Raspberry Pi kit. Bigger display area and brighter colors over the 3.2 inch serial display. I popped a zero into this one to give extra long playtime on a single charge. Also added an expansion board for easy access to the SD card and a USB port for an external controller for those games that need extra buttons. And there's, a, there's several photos here. I was just like looking through the photos to see how people have done things. You can see that USB uh, expansion port there in the cartridge slot on the back. So this is a Zega Game Gear board. You can see these sort of custom boards that are in here. There's the Pi Zero. And the display does look like it fits very nicely in there. It does look very bright as well. And if we go to the Zega Mame Gear site, there's all sorts on here. Uh, you can see here, what is the Zega Mame Gear? Custom made drop-in kit that fits perfectly into any Sega Game Gear shell. Without any modification and no soldering, it runs on a Raspberry Pi 3A+, 0, 0, 2 and even a Compute Module 4 with the optional Compute Module 4 adapter, giving you access to thousands of retro games with RetroPie. And there's even pre-configured images that you can download uh, so you don't have to mess about with any of the screen configuration and things like that. But uh, yeah, nice, nice site, uh, Zega Mame Gear 4963. Not sponsored or anything, I just saw the story and did a bit of a search. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty impressive, nicely run. All oh, look, designed and developed in the UK. Loads of work have, has clearly gone into this. All sorts of bits you can buy. Next up, we've got a really unusual looking Pi uh, with lots of connectivity. Look at all the USB sockets on it. Uh, and we can see from the story on Reddit, this circuit board is a licensed Raspberry Pi 3B Plus custom design for an edge computing product. The Raspberry Pi organization licenses the platform out for commercial applications. This design included TPM2, battery backed RTC and 32 gig of EMMC. This board is no longer in production, but it does look cool. You can see the underside of it there. So you can see from the comments, power delivered with a barrel jack, six USB ports facing inwards and two side mounted USB ports. The notch provided clearance for an internal case standoff that supported a USB dongle. Always interesting to see. Next up we've got another Pico project from Reddit. The first keyboard I designed and built from scratch, powered by RP2040, everything is open source. So if we click to the next picture, you can see there's like a joystick control here with some extra keys. Looks like an analog dial uh, and we've got uh, a little display here which I think they show a bit closer. Uh, here's some more bits about the keyboard and the wiring and the lighting. Yeah, here's the Pico and it's fully customizable with this little display. Very nice. And from GA Gadget, this was an interesting story that popped up on my feed. Raspberry Pi's replacement was created in Russia, but it turned out to be a copy of a Chinese microcomputer on a processor from AliExpress. So Repka Pi 3, it says on the board. Got a full-size HDMI, analog jack, USBs, Ethernet, GPIO pins. The triumph of the Russian innovation community over the release of a replacement for the Raspberry Pi turned out to be very short. What we know, the other day, a number of Russian media published the news that the Skolikovo Innovation Center has created a microcomputer Repka Pi to replace the British Raspberry Pi. But it would be correct to call the development Chinese, not Russian. Repka Pi is oriented to be used as a platform for training IT specialties. In addition, the new development of Russian specialists can be used to develop a system for data collection and transmission. And here we've got uh, various different things in Russian and some close-ups of the board that it's obviously based on. It says that the performance is increased by 15 to 20% compared to the Raspberry Pi. Turned out the novelty is a copy of the Chinese Nano Pi K1 Plus, which went on sale four years ago. Something a little different. This is cool. Uh, are you being followed? Uh, this is from PC Mag. Use a Raspberry Pi to find out. Using inexpensive components, a black hat presenter built a device that sniffs the airwaves to check for people on your tail. And it talks about how uh, devices are always putting out signals and it looks for these signals. And uh, 
looks for patterns and basically warns you if something is following you around. Uh, a bit like Apple do if you've got an AirTag, if someone puts an AirTag on you and you've got an Apple device, it will warn you that something is tracking you. But they also talk about uh, you've got a list that you can put on there of devices that you own, so it can ignore those and only look for devices uh, that show up, new devices that show up that start following you around. But yeah, really good read. I'll put a link in the description to this and it looks cool in its, uh, in its case with its big antennas and everything. Tom's Hardware had this story, Raspberry Pi Pico used in plug and play system monitor. Keep an eye on your CPU without closing any windows. You can see it's on the side here if I zoom in a bit. It's this here with a little display. Although interesting to see a USB port on the actual screen of that device. Creating a teeny system monitor for his MacBook from scratch with help from our favourite microcontroller. So how's that connected to a MacBook? Because there wouldn't be a USB socket there. I don't know if there's any other pictures. The device is Pico powered and plugs right into the MacBook to function. It has a display screen that showcases a custom GUI featuring four bar graphs that update in real time to show the performance in different components, including the CPU, GPU, memory and SSD usage. Ah, there's a video on Twitter. Let's have a look for that. I'm none the wiser about how it's connected. It looks like it might be magnetic. Another cool video here, my CNC drawing machine. And if we play a little bit of the video, but the description is the interesting bit as to what it's built of. You can see here, it works, works like a printer in, in this stage, but there's future plans for it. You can see that it's drawing something there. I won't let it play all of it. Well, in fact, I'll skip a bit so you can see the drawing. It looks nice and accurate. I'm using old CD drives for the X and Y axis, an old floppy drive for the Z axis, and a servo motor to move the pen. I wrote the whole software myself. On the Arduino is a G-code interpreter to control the movement via coordinates. On the Raspberry Pi runs a Python software to manage the upload of the G-codes per serial. The GUI is currently in development. On an Arduino Uno is a prototype software of a GPO extender I wrote to program read and write Arduino pins with a Python script. It took me four months to do it. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And in the comments, uh, it's a plotter. That's what they used to be called anyway. It's very cool, nice build OP. Thanks, I know, but I call it a CNC because that's what it's designed for, a test machine to build a big CNC. I'm testing the software with it. And eventually it's gonna be used for wood, aluminium and soft steel. So that's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Okay, so I hope all that helps. I'm gonna try and work out how this wireless keyboard goes together. Uh, this is one I mentioned in a previous Pi News, uh, and it's the one that can take a Pi Zero or a Pi Four, and uh, it goes together as a, as a proper keyboard. So a bit like an old Spectrum or something like that. So yeah, that'll be in a future video. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.